Today, we're doing exactly what the title of this video suggested. We're going to be ranking every personal Chase credit card has to offer. According to Chase's own website, there are 29 personal Chase credit cards. And before we begin, let's break down exactly what the tier list has. You have God tier, A, B, C, D, and garbage. All right, let's begin with the Chase Freedom Unlimited. The Chase Freedom Unlimited is an okay card in my opinion. Uh, currently right now, there is a sign up bonus offer of $200 cash back after spending $500 within the first three months of account opening. You also get an additional 5% back, I believe on grocery store purchases within your first year, which is always a great perk to have. The caveats of this card, it is a $0 annual fee card, but the caveats in my opinion are the earnings potential. You earn 5% back on travel, 3% back on dining, 3% back on drugstores, and then here's the kicker, and this is why it's called a catch-all credit card, it earns 1.5% back on every other purchase. The whole point of this card is to mop up any unlimited ultimate reward points that you get from categories that your other credit cards don't get more than 1x back in. But, to be fair, the unlimited competition is pretty big. I can name four credit cards off the top of my head that have at least a 2x multiplier. Let's say like the Wells Fargo Active Cash, the City Double Cash, the Capital One Venture X, even though that's a travel credit card, has a 2x catch-all credit multiplier. And then also the American Express Blue Business Plus. With that factored in, I think the Freedom Unlimited is a C-tier credit card because at the end of the day, it's when it's competing against the other catch-all credit cards in the credit card world today, it's a pretty lackluster card. So I think the Freedom Unlimited is a C-tier credit card. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the Chase Freedom Flex. Now, this is also an interesting card. It's also one of those cards that are in what is called the Chase Trifecta. Um, the, the quirkiness about this card is that it's similar to the Discover It Cashback credit card, where it's 5x back on select categories every single quarter. That is also a double-edged sword in my opinion because you always have to remember every quarter you have to go and physically activate the categories or else you're just getting 1x back. Similar to the Freedom Unlimited, it earns 3x back on dining and then 3x back on drugstores. It also has an elevated sign-up bonus offer of the $200 cash back after spending $500 uh, with the grocery 5% kicker for the first year. Um, but in terms of the overall experience of the card, dining and drugstores, I wish that the Chase Trifecta and Chase in general would just implement a more concrete earnings category like 3% back on gas or 3% back on grocery store purchases. It would make this combination a much viable, much more viable combination. The issue that I have right now with it is that there's a lot of repeating categories with the cards and because of that, because of the 5x categories, I would say that it's slightly better than the Freedom a limited, but in terms of everything else, I still think it's a B tier credit card. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the Freedom Rise. This card is pretty new. I think it came out early this year, but from what I can understand, it's like a credit, like a starting credit builder credit card. The weird thing about this card is that it also earns 1.5x back on all purchases. It doesn't have the other multipliers like the 3% on dining or the 3% on drugstores. But because of that, it makes the Freedom Unlimited even worse. Because if the Freedom Unlimited is already getting 1.5% back, but the Starter Builder credit card is also getting 1.5% back, the Freedom Unlimited needs to upgrade. Everything else about the card is pretty lackluster in terms of points and everything else. But if you're just starting out in a credit card game, maybe this is a card that people will recommend to you. Uh, overall, it is a decent card, but in terms of the overall credit card point game, I would still compare it to a average or C tier credit card. Moving along, we have the Slate Edge. And from, I don't know too much about this card, but from what I understand, it's one of those like credit transfer cards where you, if you have a, an assortment of credit card debt or you want to transfer your, your balance out from one of your other credit cards, you transfer it to this one because the sign up bonus offer for this one is 0% APR for the first 18 months of having this card. So you're getting no interest for 18 months, which is a pretty good deal. 
um, it comes with zero dollar annual fee but it also doesn't but the caveat is that it doesn't earn you any percentage back in ultimate reward points it's just a balance transfer card so in that case in terms of the whole credit card game and why we we as a community do this in the first place i would say the slate edge is a d tier credit card it just doesn't provide anything other than the fact if you want to mitigate paying interest on your credit card balances you should get this card to be fair a bunch of these other credit cards also offer you zero percent apr for like 12 months 15 months with the freedom unlimited and the freedom flex so it's not really a big deal to get this card next we're going to go to the money makers in my opinion of the chase trifecta and that has to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now the Chase Sapphire Preferred is one of the most recommended travel credit cards to get when you first start out. And there is good reason for that. It's a $95 annual fee travel credit card that earns you 5x back on travel purchases, 2x back on other travel purchases, 3x back on dining, 3x back on online grocery, 3x back on just like streaming services and then 1x back on everything else. If that really confused you when I said it was a travel credit card but it earns you 3x on dine online grocery store purchases and also 3x on select streaming services, that is something that I am extremely confused about too. The Chase Freedom Flex, Chase Freedom Unlimited, and the Chase Sapphire Preferred combine together to unlock Chase's transfer partner list. Um, I think in terms of the trifecta itself, it is being carried by the Chase's transfer partners. And if it, if it had any other lackluster transfer partner list, like a Capital Ones or Cities, for example, I would rank this setup as a C tier and if not a D tier setup. It doesn't earn you that many points. You're earning 3x back on dining, which everyone goes out to groceries, uh, everyone goes out to restaurants. But then it's everything else is kind of up in the air. You get 5x back on select select categories every single quarter with the freedom flex but then you, you have to you have to plan around that right and you get 1.5x back with the freedom unlimited it's also pretty lackluster in terms of the catch-all catch-all market so if that's the case i think the sapphire preferred is a pretty b-tier credit card it is a great mid-tier travel credit card but that's just it it's a mid-tier travel credit card it doesn't earn you that much in terms of every credit card in chase's arsenal Chase Sapphire Preferred, I think is a B tier credit card. It's the big brother of the Chase Sapphire Preferred and that is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Now this card, even though I've done a video in the past where I compared the American Express Platinum card to the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Capital One Venture X, and I gave the Sapphire Reserve a third place, I still think overall amongst Chase credit cards, it is a great credit card. It's a $550 annual fee premium travel credit card with $300 in travel credit. So basically the, the expected annual fee is $250. On top of that, it's the only premium travel credit card amongst the AMX Platinum, Capital One, uh, Venture X, and the Reserve to have a priority pass with no limitations. If you have the Platinum, if you have the Capital One Venture X, both of those credit cards have a limitation on the priority pass where you can't go to any of the restaurants under the priority pass umbrella. So it, it, it does have it doesn't have that limitation compared to the other premium travel credit cards. Additionally, Chase has been super, super, super pushing the airport lounge market. Uh, according to news, there are going to be nine total Chase Sapphire lounges across the United States. And for me, oh, and also Hong Kong for some reason, but for me, I think even though that the Sapphire lounges are technically under the priority umbrella right now, Chase can take that privilege away anytime. So once these once these lounges are finished and complete and people get a glimpse of how good the Sapphire lounges are, especially the one that is currently on the market in Boston Logan Airport, Chase is going to take that privilege away and only give it to those who have the Chase Sapphire preferred with limitations and the Chase Sapphire reserve with unlimited limitations so because of that because of that i think the chase sapphire reserve is the first a tier credit card amongst the chase ecosystem the next credit card that we're going to be talking about is the prime visa credit card from amazon prime this is the first co-branded credit card that we're seeing from uh chase and i think competitively it is a great card to have 
If you're someone who shops on Amazon.com a lot or Whole Foods or Amazon Fresh, I definitely recommend this card because it earns 5% back at those places. Amongst that, you also get 2% back at gas stations and restaurants as well, and also on local transit, then it's 1% on everything else. In terms of pure cash back, this is a great credit card to have. The only caveat is that you need a active Prime membership, but for someone like me and anyone else currently living in the United States, Amazon Prime is something that basically everyone has and and, and that and if that's the case i highly recommend this credit card oh and i forgot to mention this the credit cards that i do have with chase is the chase freedom flex chase freedom unlimited chase sapphire preferred and the prime visa um i'm going to put the prime visa right next to the chase sapphire reserve overall it's a great credit card only caveat is that you need an amazon prime membership but for someone like me i'm going to have the amazon prime membership for a long time so i don't see why i'd ever not need this card it's a great card five percent back on amazon always highly highly recommended now the weird thing is the other amazon credit card that chase provides and that's the amazon visa there is no difference between the two cards other than the fact that the Amazon Visa only earns you 3% back at Amazon, Amazon Fresh, and Whole Foods. It also has a $0 annual fee. Oh, and one thing I do want to mention about the Amazon Prime credit cards is that if you want an elevated sign-up bonus offer, make sure to get these cards around Prime Day, which happens two to three times every single year. Currently, the sign-up bonus offers for the Prime and the Amazon Visa is $100 in Amazon gift cards and $50 in Amazon gift cards. But when Prime Day rolls around, that that sign-up bonus offer is elevated to a $200 sign-up bonus Amazon gift card offer. So if you want to get the Prime Visa card, make sure to wait until Prime Day rolls around and get that elevated sign-up bonus offer. But back to the story, Amazon Visa, not really a decent card. You already have the Prime, which have better benefits. The Amazon Visa, really not recommended here. I'm going to put this card as a garbage credit card just because it really doesn't make any sense to have to to offer two credit cards when one is clearly better than the other moving on next we're going over to the southwest co-branded credit cards um i personally like that flying with southwest i think i flew with southwest for the first time last year when i was visiting my girlfriend in in, in maryland but but southwest in my opinion i know that some people don't like the cow herding the the sheep herding mentality where you have to stand in line and you don't get to pick your own personal seat you have to get the luck of the draw and go on the plane to see but for me personally i've flown like two or three times and every single time people want to want to spend more time with their family they'll sit next to their family their friends their spouses so at the end of the line if you're at the end of the line i mostly get the empty seats in the back and sometimes one time actually i got all three seats in the row to myself no one wanted to sit with me i don't know if i smelled bad or something like that but no one wanted to sit with me and it was a great experience i took a little nap sprawled out it was a great deal but in terms of the southwest rapid rewards plus credit card I don't think it's a good credit card. It has a $69 annual fee, but some of the other cards, the Premier and the Priority, are just better offers. It earns 2x back on a lot of different purchases like Southwest purchases, hotels, car rentals, internet cable, and stuff like that. But in terms of the benefits, it just doesn't compete with the likes of the Premier and Priority. So if that's the case, I'm gonna put the prior I'm gonna put this rewards plus as a C tier credit card. Moving forward, we have the priority credit card and also the Premier. Now the only difference between the two is that it seems like the Premier is a slightly shaded darker blue while the Priority is a slightly lighter shade of blue but I don't know if that's just me seeing it differently or anything like that but these are the other two credit cards that Southwest has. I recommend that the only time you ever get these credit cards is if you're trying to secure the coveted Southwest Companion Pass which a lot of people do enjoy. Other than that, I really don't see a reason to have these credit cards, but for the Southwest Priority, it is a $149 annual fee every single year, but you do get a $75 statement credit that you can use at Southwest. Right off the bat, that's a $74 effective annual fee compared to the Southwest Rapids Rewards Plus, which had a $69 annual fee. So if that's the case, the Priority is already better than the Plus. Additionally, the Premier is their like mid-tier credit card. It's it has a $99 annual fee and it gives you additional points. 
In terms of comparison here, I would put the Premier as a B tier credit card just because in terms of all the credit cards that you need from Southwest, I feel like in my opinion, you only need the priority in terms of in terms of everything else. So if that's the case, I would go with the priority over the Premier or the Plus. This is where we go over to the United co-branded credit cards. For me personally, I don't really like the United co-branded credit cards and I have good reason for that but we're gonna go into it. First up is the United Explorer credit card. This is a $0 intro annual fee for the first year, but after the first year, you're paying $95. Um, there's not really much to say about this card. It doesn't really give you too many benefits. It does give 2X back on United purchases, dining, hotels, and stays. All the other credit cards do the same thing. All the other co-branded credit cards do the same thing. The $99 annual fee, in my opinion, I don't really recommend it, especially because the United Quest card is a $250 annual fee card, but you also get a $125 statement credit that you can use at United. So already it's a $125 annual fee versus a $200 versus a $99 annual fee but one gives you way more benefits than the other one so why would you ever go for the United Explorer credit card the United Gateway credit card is the downgrade path if you ever wanted to downgrade from a from an annual fee card into a zero dollar annual fee just because of that I feel like there's a little more potential uh, just because of that I do like the gateway card a little more and then finally there is the United Club which is their most premium travel credit card it, I think it has a from what I can remember like a $525 annual fee yes $525 annual fee uh, the bonuses that it, this card gives is that it gives you United Club lounge access, which is uh, United's airport lounge network. Other than that, it gives, I don't know, it gives first free check, first free, first, first and second free check bag, as well as other benefits like $100 in TSA pre-check credit. If you're someone who frequently flies with United or just frequently flies in general, maybe the United Club card might be a better deal for you. I would say that the United Club card is a B tier credit card along with the United Gateway credit card. But in terms of the other credit cards, the United Explorer or the United Quest, I would say that their C tier credit card is not really a hassle. You don't really need these cards. Um, but I digress. I really just don't recommend co-branded credit cards, especially with airline companies in the first place. So the next credit card that we're going to be talking about is the Canadian credit card or the aeroplane credit card. This is the Air Canada co-branded credit card. I think this is a decent credit card. It has a $95 annual fee, but you get 3% back in grocery stores and dining, as well as directly with Air Canada purchases. You also get your free first check back. If you're a, if you constantly go to Canada or you fly with Air Canada, I think this is a highly recommended card for you to have. You also get 500 bonus points for every $2,000 $2, that you spend with Air Canada. Other than that, it's a pretty decent card. It's a co-branded credit card with flights. There's not really anything anything else to say about this card. I think it's also a C tier credit card. If you fly with Canada, Air Canada a lot, maybe it goes up to B tier or A tier. But for me, I don't fly I don't fly with Air Canada at all, so I don't ever think that I'll be ever getting this card. But for those of you out there with Air Canada who who like Air Canada, highly, highly recommend this card. The next credit card that we're going to be talking about is the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless. Now, if you guys didn't know last year, Marriott decided to revamp the credit cards. The one with Marriott, uh, the two with Marriott were the more expensive, more premium Marriott credit cards. And that was the, that was the Bountiful on Chase's side. And I forget the name of the one in the American Express's side. But the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless is their mid tier credit card and it's a $95 annual fee card. Um, you earn 17x back on Marriott properties, 3x back on dining, grocery stores, and gas stations, and then 2x back on everything else. You also get a free free night award stay for any hotel level up until $35,000. Pretty good, per, uh, 35,000 points. Other than that, it's pretty good. Um, I think it's better than the Marriott Bountiful, and so I think it's also it's going to be a B tier credit card for me. And this is one of the cards out there that I will be seeking to get in the future as well. Next, we're going to go over to the Marriott Bountiful. There's not really anything to say about this card. I highly, highly do not recommend you get this card. When it first came out, when it first was revamped by Chase uh, Marriott and 
and American Express and Chase. I thought it was a hot garbage card. I made a video about it. I don't understand why people would get this card. It's a $250 annual fee card. It earns 18.5x on Marriott properties, 4x back on groceries, dining, and then 2x back on everything else. You do get a free reward night stay for up to $50,000 or 50,000 point hotel. Other than that, it's an okay card. Don't recommend it. Don't hate it. It's a garbage card. Next up, we have the Marriott Bonvoy Bold. Like the bount uh, like the Boundless, it is one of the lower tier Marriott credit cards in the credit card game. It has a zero dollar annual fee, so all, right off the bat, I think I like it more than the Bountiful or the Boundless, just because most of these credit cards you're going for the you're going for the sign up bonus offer anyways. And I think the Bold is a, just a better choice in terms of what it has to offer. You still earn 14x back on Marriott properties, 2x back on everything else. And you get 15 night elite credits qualifying you for silver elite status whenever you book at a marriott property it doesn't give you that annual it doesn't give you that free anniversary night stay at, at any of the hotel chains with marriott but in terms of the downgrade path i just like that it has a zero dollar annual fee and because of that i think it's also a actually i would say that it's slightly worse than the boundless it doesn't make sense. This one gives you a free night. This one does not. It's just a $0 annual fee. And because of that, I think it's slightly worse than the Boundless. For whatever reason, IHG and Chase, the IHG program was hacked for a long time. So these credit cards weren't offered to anyone. But I think IHG is making a revamp. They do have a special offer right now of 140,000 bonus points plus $100 in statement credit, which means the $99 annual fee every single year is eliminated for at least the first year. Energy 26x back at ISG hotels and then also 5x back on travel, dining, and gas stations and 3x on everything else. You also get an anniversary free night for up to 40,000 40, point redemption level as well as redeem three nights get the fourth night free when you redeem points for a consecutive four night IHG hotel stay. You can receive a fourth reward night for free. Because of that, oh, also you can earn a hundred dollar statement credit and ten thousand bonus points if you spend twenty thousand dollars or more within a calendar year. Right off the bat, I think that this is all, like in terms of IHG and credit cards and reward points, I think the IHG is pr premier is up there with the boundless it, i think it's a b-tier credit card and i think it's a phenomenal credit card the reward nights are definitely something that everyone should be going for and because of that i think it's also a b-tier credit card the other card that ihg has is the ihg one rewards which is pretty similar to the ihg it does it just doesn't have a annual fee uh, it, it just doesn't have an annual fee and it, I would say that it's synonymous it's, it goes pretty similar with the it goes pretty similar with the bond boy bolt is the Disney Premier Visa. I think this is a great card. It is a $49 annual fee card, but if you're a Disney fan out there, I highly, highly recommend this card for you. I would think that it's a pretty god tier credit card, um, but for the sake of this video and what I've been what I've been talking about for the past 26 minutes or so, 25 minutes or so, I think that the Disney Premier, because it has an annual fee, it doesn't really make any sense. I think it does earn 5x back, 5% back on Disney+, Plus, Disney.com, Hulu, and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. I, I'll be honest here. It's a garbage credit card. You really don't need it. I don't really understand why anyone would ever get this card, considering that Chase has that 524 rule. This one as well. It doesn't really make sense to ever get this card. I think this even earns 1% back. Yeah, it earns 1% back, which is even worse than the Disney Disney Premier Disney Disney Premier credit card. Moving on, we have the World of Hyatt. There's not much to say other than the fact this is this is the first god tier credit card within the Chase ecosystem. World of Hyatt Hyatt Hotels is an amazing transfer partner that Chase has and having a dedicated credit card that helps you earn ultimate reward that helps you earn Hyatt points is an amazing thing to have. Additionally, you also get a free night stay for category one through four Hyatt hotels. And you can also get another one, access to another one if you spend $15,000 or more within the within a calendar year. Highly, highly recommend this card. The only caveat I have is that I don't like to sign a bonus offer that it always offers, which is like a 60,000 bonus point offer that's split between like 30,000 points when you, when you spend $15,000 or something like that, and then 30,000 points when you spend like $3,000. I just that's the one sign of bonus offer that's the one caveat I don't like about the 
World of Hyatt card, but everything else about the card, really great. One of the cards that I do want to get in the future. British Airways, similar to how I felt about the Canada credit card. Um, unless you're flying with British Airways a lot, I wouldn't recommend this card. But if you're someone who goes to Europe or something like that, a ton of... I would recommend this card for you, especially if you're a British Airways stan. Aer Lingus, same thing. I also think it's a C tier credit card. It's just, it's just not my cup of tea. If you, if you go, if you fly with Aer Lingus a lot, definitely recommend the card. But if you're not someone who flies with Aer Lingus a lot, don't, definitely don't recommend the card. Iberia Plus, same deal. I think it's a C tier credit card. Co-branded airline credit cards are just average. They're not they're not good, they're not bad, they're just average. And if you don't fly with them pretty often, there's really no point in ever getting that card. And now we're rounding the corner, but we have two more credit cards to talk about. The first one is the DoorDash credit card. Really gained no hype when it came out. Absolute garbage credit card. I think it earns 5x back on DoorDash purchases, as well as a, I think you get Door, DoorDash Dash Pass or something like that. No one needs it unless you're super lazy and just don't go outside. That's the only time you would ever get that card. Uh, additionally, the Instacart credit card, similar to the DoorDash credit card, it earns 5% back on Instacart purchases. Highly, highly don't recommend it if you are someone out there who is so lazy that you can't even get out of your seat to go to a grocery store. What on earth is the point of an Instacart or DoorDash credit cards? I don't know, but they're garbage credit cards. All right. All right, that just about wraps up my video. What do you think about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And with that, thank you for watching as always. Stay safe out there, everybody. Peace.